Hello, my name's Rachel and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I will be going through what exactly an investment fund is, what's an investment trust, an ETF, a stock, a share, a bond, what is the difference between them all and what might be the best choice if you are a beginner investor looking to invest for the first time. I'll also be giving you a bit more information about why you might want to choose a specific type of investment and sharing with you how much of each type of investment I'm currently holding and how beginner friendly I think they are. So today I went back on my Amazon account to see when I first bought my very first investing book and it was back in 2012, so nearly nine years ago now. And before then, I genuinely thought that the way you invested in the stock market was just buying individual stocks and shares. I had no idea there was a vast array of different investments that you could make that could make investing much, much easier for you and hopefully more profitable too. So let's get started with the basic individual individual stocks and shares. So buying a share in a company basically represents part ownership of that company. So if, for example, you buy a share in Apple, then you own a little slice of the Apple company. Investing has got much easier now and you can actually buy fractional shares of companies now. So you don't have to have enough money to buy one whole share of a company. For example, I own half a share of Apple, so 0.5 of a share of Apple. So you can go ahead and buy individual stocks and shares on many different platforms here in the UK. If you want to buy fractional shares, you could look at Free Trade or Trading212 or an app like that if you want to keep it really simple. Now I'm going to give you my personal opinion on investing in individual stocks and shares as a complete beginner. I personally would say that you probably are better to start with one of the other options. Investing in individual stocks and shares can be difficult if you don't want to do a lot of research into individual stocks and shares and you don't have the time to do it, then perhaps as a complete beginner choosing one of the other investment types might be a good way to move forward. Having said that, I do have a few individual stocks and shares myself, but this is not where I put the majority of my money because I would still consider myself to be a beginner investor and I don't feel comfortable putting a lot of money into individual stocks and shares. So at the moment I have a thousand pounds in my training 212 account and just over 200 pounds in my free trade account whereas the bulk of my money I like to invest in an investment ISA in different funds, trusts and ETFs. So let's move on to our next option which is funds. Now this is where I have the majority of my money currently invested in actively managed funds. So what is an actively managed fund? It's basically a fund that is run by a fund manager and they are buying individual stocks and shares and selling them and doing the research for you. So when you're buying an actively managed fund, you're basically buying a slice of that fund's investments. And most funds will be invested in between around 20 to 70 different stocks and shares. So you've basically got a basket of stocks and shares there already made that have been hand-picked by an expert. So an actively managed fund will usually focus on a specific sector or a specific theme or a specific region. So an example of this is that I hold the Bailey Gifford Positive Change Fund. I will link a video on this here as well. So the companies that you will find in Bailey Gifford Positive Change focus on having a positive impact on the world and making a positive change. So that is the theme that drives those investment managers to invest in specific companies. But you could choose a fund that focuses on, for example, investing in a specific region or geographical area. For example, I am invested in the Bailey Gifford American Fund, which obviously focuses on investing in the US. So the companies that they hold are all US based and their target is to beat the S&P 500. And they have had some very, very strong results so far. So you can choose a fund based on your specific interests or based on a specific area that you think you'd like to invest in. And you don't have to go into that level of detail into picking individual stocks and shares. You can pick more of a theme or a sector. An example of a fund that I hold that focuses on a specific sector would be the Black Rock World Technology Fund, and which obviously focuses on investing in tech. A couple of factors that are really important to consider if you're thinking about investing in a fund is to look at those fees, as I said, because they can be that bit higher. 
um, than investing in, for example, an ETF or investing in individual stocks and shares. And then also it's important to understand that only 24% of actively managed funds do manage to beat the market. I am invested in some actively managed funds that have historically beaten the market and since I have been invested in them, they have continued to beat the market. So I am happy with paying additional fees to be invested in them. But you do need to be careful when you're choosing which fund you want to invest in because if they're not going to beat the market, then it's probably not worth paying those extra fees. Now, moving on to investment trusts. So investment trusts are very similar to investment funds, but the difference is that they're listed as companies on the London Stock Exchange, so they trade like individual shares do. I also have a good amount of money invested in investment trusts as well. An example of an investment trust that I'm currently invested in is the Scottish Mortgage Investment Trust. This has very little to do with Scotland, to be honest. It's a global trust, but it's been established since 1909 and the name goes back in history. So very little to do with Scotland or mortgages. And that's just its name. So it's a global investment trust and it has achieved five year annualized returns of over 35%. So the only real difference between an investment trust and an investment fund is how they are traded. Now moving on to ETFs, which stands for exchange traded funds. These are probably the most popular choice for beginner investors. And it makes a lot of sense if you're a beginner to start with something like an ETF. The ETFs are really, really good because they give you that fantastic level of diversity because essentially they're just tracking a market. So you are getting a lot of diversity within an ETF you're perhaps not getting in an actively managed fund or trust. They also come with very, very low fees, much lower than, again, funds or trusts. So they could be a really good option if you are a complete beginner. An example of an ETF that you might have heard about a lot is, for example, an S&P 500 ETF like Vanguard's VUSA. So if you're investing in the S&P 500, you will get the 500 top companies in the US within that bundle of different stocks and shares. As I said, an example of an S&P 500 index tracker with low fees is Vanguard's VUSA or VUSA. I personally am not invested in this ETF and I don't hold a huge amount of ETFs if I'm completely honest. And this is because I prefer to invest a lot of my money into those investment funds and investment trusts that do beat the market that have had higher returns. However, I'm absolutely not saying ETFs aren't fantastic vehicles for investment. And I think that as a beginner, they offer that diversity, those low fees, and they're potentially less volatile than some of the funds and trusts that I'm invested in, um, which as a beginner might make you feel more comfortable. So I do hold a couple of ETFs in my portfolio, and that is the iShares Global Clean Energy, and then I also hold the Invesco Markets NASDAQ. EQQQ100 as well. So those are the ETFs that I currently hold, but I don't have a huge amount of ETFs in my portfolio at the moment. But for beginners, I think that they are a really, really strong way to start investing. Also, they can actually offer some really, really good returns. For example, the S&P 500, the Vanguard one, the VUSA one that I was talking you through, has had five-year annualized returns of over 15% which is still really strong. As I said, not as strong as the Bailey Gifford American Fund that I'm invested in, which is trying to beat the S&P 500, but still really good returns and potentially less stressful as a beginner investor. And then the last thing I'm going to talk you through is bonds. So I am not invested in any bonds at the moment. I'm in my 30s and bonds are considered to be generally lower risk and lower return investments. So they might be more suited if you're getting closer to retirement potentially. Bonds are basically loans to the government or to companies and they're listed on the London Stock Exchange and they trade in a similar way to shares. So bonds, to be honest, isn't something I know a huge amount about. So as I said, I'm not invested in any bonds, so I don't wanna go into huge amounts of detail in this video around bonds because I am certainly not an expert on them. And um, so it might be better to go and check out another video. I might find a really good one and link it down below on bonds. But yes, at the moment I am not invested in any bonds because at the moment I'm choosing to prioritize higher risk investments 
um, in the hope that I will see higher rewards over time and my risk appetite is slightly higher um, than potentially investing in bonds. Thank you so very much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful as a beginner. I hope I've explained things nice and easily and given you some examples of the different investments that I'm currently holding and the ones that you might want to consider as a beginner investor. But please, please do go away and do your own research. I am a DIY beginner investor doing it for myself and my own risk appetite and my own personal goals. And your goals uh, might be very, very different to mine. So I do want to make sure you go away and do your own research and feel really comfortable in what you're investing in. But investing for me has been absolutely fantastic. I'm really enjoying it. I'm enjoying seeing my money grow, which is amazing. So um, definitely go away, read lots of books, do lots of research and get started because it can be so very interesting and really, really rewarding too. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch and have a lovely day. Bye-bye.